Hey guys, I'm Priya and I'm back with one more exciting yet informational video on pelvic x-ray interpretation. Looking at hip x-rays and commenting on the abnormalities was a struggle during my medical school placements and one of the lessons that I've learned so far is to have a good system to follow, just like the ABCDE formula for chest x-ray and BBC method for abdominal x-rays. Check out these videos in my Priya Meds channel under the medicine playlist. Okay, let's get into the details now. When you get a hip x-ray to comment or document on, always have a structure. First, document the patient's data in terms of their name, date of birth and ID number. Then, continue with the image data and image quality. When was the film taken, any previous imaging and the quality can be commented based on the rotation, projection and exposure. For example, you can say something like, this is an AP film pelvic x-ray with good exposure and good penetration and the film is not rotated. Another way of looking at the quality of x-ray is by checking the contrast between the bone. If you can see the cortex or medulla and the soft tissues clearly, that means it has good penetration. Contrast can be lost if the image is too bright or underly penetrated. If it's too dark, then it's overly penetrated. Next, look out for the markers which implies the right and left side of the film. If the markers are obscuring the film, feel free to comment as suboptimal film. And if everything's good, you can say visualized bones are normal. There is a thing called rule of two in orthopedic radiology. It means when you have an orthopedic x-ray or anything related to bones, Note that there should be two views, it can be AP view, PA view or many other views. Two joints which means one joint above and one joint below, two sides and two occasions that means different timing. Next, you want to comment on the most striking abnormality on the film. Usually in medical school level, fractures are commonly tested. Fracture defines as the discontinuity in the substance of the bone. It's usually seen as loosened line or dark line in the bone. Now, when you see a fracture line like that, detailed description will be needed in order to get you the marks. There are many types of fracture lines that you can see in a pelvic x-ray. These are just some of them. There are impacted fracture, spiral fracture, transverse fracture, oblique fracture, comminuted fracture and many more which you can see in this diagram here. So for pelvic x-ray, there are some ways and areas to look at to identify these fractures. First, you can look at the disruption of cortex. Second, you can look at the breaks of Shenton's line. Third, you can visualize the interrupted trabecular pattern. For your information, it's normal to have these six trabecular patterns. When these lines are disrupted on a pelvic x-ray, that's when you will suspect a fracture. Next, you can also look at three bony rings, which is the main pelvic ring and the two smaller obturator rings formed by the pubic rami. Then, you can also look at the ilioischial and iliopubic lines or iliopectineal lines. Then, you want to look at the sacroiliac joints in case if the patient has ankylosing spondylitis or probably a fracture there. And finally, the pubic symphysis. Normally, it should be less than 5 mm wide. Next, after identifying the fracture, you will need to describe them. I was taught to describe fracture in one of the most amazing ways in medical school. And I would love to share with you this today, which is the 3S, 2C, and 2D way. So let's look into them first. First is the site. You want to start whether this is an intracapsular or extracapsular fracture. You can go even more detail in terms of intracapsular fracture which is further divided into neck of femur or head of femur whereas extracapsular fracture is further divided into intertrochanteric fracture and subtrochanteric fracture. Next will be single or multiple fracture. The next S is special. 
So if the fracture has some kind of special names, for example, like Collis fracture, which is a fracture of distal part of radius, then you can include it. But if there is none, then you can exclude them. For C, you can talk about complete or incomplete fracture. Incomplete fracture occurs when the bone cracks and bends but does not completely break. But when the bone does break into separate pieces, that's when you call it as complete fracture. The next C will be closed or open fracture. Open fracture is one in which the bone breaks through the skin. If you don't see any break or wound on the superficial skin, that is a closed fracture. Next is D, direction. So you want to look at what kind of direction the fracture has gone into. Whether this is a transverse fracture, longitudinal fracture, or oblique or spiral fracture. Then last but not least, it's displaced or undisplaced. Displaced fracture means bone breaks into two or more pieces and moves out of the alignment. Whereas non-displaced fracture or undisplaced fracture means the bone breaks but does not move out of the alignment. So once we are done talking about the most striking abnormality, next you want to comment on the bone texture. If you see fine trabeculae within the bone, this is normal. If the trabecular pattern are lost and the medulla appears more loosened, then the patient could be having osteoporosis, which means reduced bone mass. It's very common in elderly and most of the elderly, they present with fractures due to the bone fragility. At the same time, if the medulla appears brighter, it could be osteopetrosis, which is a congenital metabolic bone disease that makes the bones abnormally dense and very easily to break. And then finally, you want to comment on the soft tissue shadowing surrounding the bone. Is there any increase in size or change in density, any subcutaneous emphysema or calcification? As for medical students, it's good to start with fracture neck or femur, which is almost every time gets tested in exams. And before trying out a question, there is one classification that you should know by heart for fracture neck or femur, and that is Garden's classification. Including this in your documentation gives you extra point and helps you with the management plan as well. Now, let's put all of this into practice, shall we? A 75-year-old man has fallen over at home. He was unable to get up and has been brought to A&E by ambulance where it was noted that his left leg was shortened and externally rotated. His pelvic x-ray has been taken. Please review and document the abnormality seen. So here we go. We have the 75-year-old man's AP view hip x-ray in front of us. On the right, I have listed down the structure to go with it with the pelvic x-ray and on the left I have the description of a fracture which we can use it later on okay let's get into it first first thing first patient detail here we don't really see any of the patient details it has been anonymized you don't see any timing here there is no previous imaging so it's good to include that in your documentation and also with the image data and quality you can see there is a right marker here so it shows that it's the right side the patient's body and that's the right hip and um, for the quality itself i can see the whole pelvis here very clearly the bone the medulla the cortex are clearly seen the soft tissues are clearly seen so i would say this is a good penetration film with good exposure so that's right image data and quality is done now most striking abnormality like i said first you want to look for any sorts of fracture the most striking that you can definitely look is on the left side if you would have noticed but let's go through one by one and uh, see if there is anything else as well okay let's get another pen there you go so this is the iliopectineal line okay there is no fracture there this is your obturator line okay no fracture as well the pubic rami is perfect it's less than 5 mm wide good okay and this is your sacroiliac joint they are not very clearly seen so i wouldn't want to risk and comment on that but if you want to say it's not very clearly seen yeah go ahead you can do that as well 
the next line that is very very important in hip x-ray is Shenton's line so let's start with the right side first okay you see here that is a clear Shenton's line so let me just write that down now look to the left side boom you can see a clear discrepancy on the left and the right side both of them should be in the same order but here the left side is a bit higher because you can see there is a fracture there right so you can say there's a broken Shenton's line on the left side or you can just say there's a bit of a discrepancy in the Shenton's line when compared with both of the hips okay right now fracture so how to describe the fracture let's delete all this so that you can see the fracture clearly and let me change my pen as well so there is a fracture here this is the fracture line okay and when it comes to description of fracture we want to be using the formula that i've covered earlier but before that you want to know whether this is an intracapsular or extracapsular fracture because it's related to the hip how do you do that just put a line here this is the intertrochanteric line below this will be the extracapsular fracture and above this will be the intracapsular fracture okay so here you clearly know that this is intracapsular fracture intracapsular fracture divided into head and neck of femur so here you know that the fracture is happening on the neck region so let's just forget about head here if you want to be more specific you can say this is actually a subcapital region of the femoral neck so there you go i have said it you have the intracapsular and next thing is the subcapital so for the method that we are using here 3s 2c 2d let's start with side first so this is an intracapsular subcapital fracture of the femoral neck of the left hip there you go that's your site next is it a single or multiple fracture this is a single fracture because we don't see any other fractures in this x-ray the next thing is special so i have never came across any sorts of special name for fracture of the hip so let's just forget about that if you know please comment down below that would be great for me to learn as well but for now nope just forget about that next is c so is this a complete or incomplete fracture so this is a complete fracture why because you can clearly see the fracture line from one end till the other end boom there you go so that is why this is a complete fracture next is it a closed or open this is a closed fracture because you don't see the bone piercing through the skin next is direction direction is not very very important in this case because even for me i would just say this is a transverse fracture because i really can't see the line very clearly if you really can't see that it's okay because you have included the words like intracapsular fracture which is very very good for a medical student but if you insist you want to write that you can go ahead write transverse fracture but if you can see things like comminuted fracture or oblique fracture really clearly you can write them down as well so direction done next is displacement which is very very important to classify this fracture in this case yes the fracture is displaced how did i know so let's use a highlighter so this is the distal part of your fracture okay this is the fracture line and then this is the distal part you can see it has displaced away from the head of femur but not completely right so you can say this is displaced but partially displaced which will come in the category of garden three stage three okay there you go you have come up with the gardens classification as well and one of the most important point to remember is gardens classification is only used when the fracture is an intracapsular fracture especially a fracture neck or femur okay not for extracapsular or for the hip so we have commented on the most striking abnormalities don't ever forget the next thing is bone texture in the soft tissue so now let's look into bone let's start from above here the lumbar spine i do see some degenerative changes on the lumbar spine because of loss of joint spaces in between the intervertebral disc and also the lumbosacral region it's not very clear the lines are not clearly seen the joint spaces i mean 
so there are some degenerative changes you can say but if you can't see then don't get that done and here on the bone itself you can see the medulla the cortex the soft tissue clearly so there is no like calcification in the bone itself which is good but there is a bit of osteoarthritis in this patient why do i say that look into the joint spaces of the both hip joint this is your acetabulum there you go this is the joint space okay there is a loss of joint spaces with some osteophytes and subchondral sclerosis and subchondral cysts which is very consistent with osteoarthritis so this patient might be having a bit of osteoarthritis as well last but not least bone texture is done now soft tissue so in soft tissue um, i don't really see any sorts of emphysema or calcification on the soft tissue here but there is something here though so this is actually a vascular calcification there is some calcification happening but it's not in the bone but in the blood vessel so probably this patient might be having some sort of comorbidities like diabetes that can cause calcification in the blood vessels so that is why it's so clearly seen in a pelvic x-ray and also there's a bit of a tiny bits here that you can note these are actually surgical clips so probably the patient would have had um, some sort of previous surgery on their left thigh and that is why they are having the surgical clips there so you can also comment on that okay now we have dissect the pelvic x-ray of the 75 year old man really well i hope you have understand now i'll show you how to present your findings in a well documented manner let's go That's all for today. Hope I've made pelvic x-ray much easier for you. Check out my other medicine related videos on my medicine playlist in Priya Meds. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.